thank you. Um, thank you all for waking up early and um, for being here. I, um, I'm traveling with this. Um, as Jürgen said, I have a really, really nasty uh, cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I might need to stop and get bonbons as well. It's just not the sugar, it's just my voice disappears. So, uh, but hopefully we, we make it and uh, if I collapse, I just point at the pictures and like you clap, so. <laughs> Good, so um, let's start. So uh, thank you, Jürgen. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> for, uh, for the invitation and you all again. And um, I'll try to stay on time. I usually always talk more than I should, but uh, I know everybody has to get back to work, so let's just get started. So, uh, so this talk is, is about Zafino Arabic. Um, how many of you are familiar with Arabic at all, like by a show of hands? Okay, good. So I, I will just um, take it easy on you guys. So, um, um, so why, why Zafino? So I've um, uh, been working with Monotype before. It was Linotype, we rebranded, now we're all Monotype. And um, I've been working on um, um, Arabic adaptations of some of our um, most popular typefaces like the Frutiger or the Helvetica and um, Universe, all of these things. So I've, I've always been interested in the relationship of Arabic and Latin and how can they uh, and how they can uh, coexist together in harmony. Um, uh, I've also worked and had the absolute um, honor of, of working with Professor Herman Zapf uh, since I joined Linotype in 2005. So at first I uh, worked on Palatino Arabic and then on Palatino Saint Arabic, and, and then there was a joke with the colleagues like, oh yeah, you can do that, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> so like, no, no, I will not do this typeface, it's too difficult. And, and at some point, um, it started to like take root this idea. And, and uh, of course, it's a pleasure to work with him. There's a, a lot to learn from someone with his experience and, and, and his talent. And um, at some point, I was like, okay, maybe we can do this. And that came about um, after this project. So this is um, this typeface is called Effendim. It's not released to the market. I designed it specifically for uh, my PhD studies. I, I was doing a PhD in um, legibility studies, looking at the effect of the complexity of the script and its effect on the legibility and reading speed. And um, the typefaces that I designed, it's a family of three, and they vary in complexity. And the one at the top, uh, the purple-looking one, pink-looking one on the screen, um, is, uh, is very much like manuscript Nasr. Nasr is a style of Arabic calligraphy that we find in Qurans and manuscripts, and it's meant for uh, handwriting. Um, it's very dynamic, very fluid, very organic, and, and I was interested to see its effect on legibility. Um, by nature, as a designer, I have always been more in favor of the simplified style, something which is more modern, less calligraphic, less, you know, decorative. Um, but after working on this project, I discovered that there is actually something really interesting about this kind of calligraphy, and we don't have to reject it, and there is much more to learn in this style. And having drawn something which is so complex, I thought like, hmm, maybe I could actually go ahead and, and do something uh, calligraphic again. I really enjoyed the drawing of it. I enjoyed the elegance, the fact that it is not utilitarian, and, and that there is this movement that is nice that comes within. And so that's sort of uh, what I decided to do. And uh, I started the typeface towards the summer of 2012. By then, I was almost finished with my PhD. I submitted in October that year. And in the summer, I knew things are finishing up. And, you know, <clears throat> maybe um, a bit, uh, you know, masochistic of me. I don't know, like, ah, oh, okay, I finished the PhD. What can I do now? So, <laughs> so, so then I was like, okay, it's a Fino Arabic. I could do this. And, and so, uh, I, um, now that's a little bit more of the, uh, of the fandom, and you can see very elegant, a lot of movement, nice calligraphy. Well, not calligraphy, calligraphy simulation. Anyway, so in that summer, I drew a few characters and I went to visit uh, Professor Zapf. Uh, he lives in Darmstadt, which is, and I live in Frankfurt, um, and, and work in Bad Homburg, obviously, and, um, and he's just like half an hour away from us. And so uh, every once in a while, uh, Akira Kobayashi, our type director, Otmar Hofer, also from product marketing and myself, we go, we visit him and show him some things. And, and with this uh, specific visit, I, I drew a few uh, isolated characters. I printed them out next to a few Latin ones, brought with me some calligraphy books, and I went to visit him. And, uh, and then this is some of the pictures from, from that visit. Uh, I explained the concept and what I was trying 
trying to do. Uh, he liked the idea and we were on. So it was really, really exciting to, to get his blessing that we can start. And of course, he will be involved in the rest of the project. And for the next two years, I, I would visit him. Uh, we always have uh, tea and cake. So uh, his, his wife always prepares that for us. Uh, and it's always nice to go and um, have a chance to talk to him, to ask his feedback. Uh, at this point, he doesn't uh, participate in the drawing. Uh, he simply gives feedback. Uh, when, when we were working together on the Palatino, uh, yeah, on the Palatino Saint uh, Arabic and Palatino Arabic, he, especially with the Palatino Arabic, he would come to the office. That was 10 years ago. We sit together all day, we draw, and then we, he sketches on hand, uh, by hand, and then I draw on computer. And so, so that was the initial um, you know, working process. But with time, I sort of learned how to draw as if he would draw. Obviously not as good as he does it, but, but I, I sort of picked it up. And I mean, over 10 years, you, you do that. And um, so, uh, so this, uh, with this project, with Zapfino, I was the one drawing, but then every once in a while I go and I show him, we sit together, this is again in his living room. And, and then you see the time passing between one visit and the other, uh, and the you know, winter comes, and you know, Game of Thrones style. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then the spring, and you see my hair going longer and shorter, and uh, you know, with time, and, and you know. But uh, it, it took two years, all in all, for this process to finish. Uh, it was uh, one of the most difficult projects that I've ever worked on. Um, I, I call it my Mount Everest. Uh, the unofficial tagline for Zafino Arabic is designed with blood. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is how difficult it was. Uh, there was nothing easy about the project. The only easy thing was the name. That, that was the only thing. Um, everything else was just uh, suicidal. And um, you'll, you'll see in a little bit. And, but regarding this, this uh, working with him, it was uh, always an honor to, to, to be able to work with him, to get his trust, and also to get his feedback. Because um, uh, the way he, I mean, he's, he's exactly 60 years older than me. We have the same birthday, it's November 8th. Uh, he's 60 plus, uh, 60 years more than me. But uh, when you sit together, his eyes are sharp, and he still has a better eye than me. And, and even though, like, yeah, so he he's amazingly uh, in tune to the details, can give you really good feedback. He's always been interested in Arabic, and so it's always been uh, such a joy to be able to 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 work with him. And uh, you can see his you know participation and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it's always nice to have him around, and uh, it's yeah, really, really cool. So now to get to the design, um, and the whole talk is called the question of slanted writing. So I'm going to take you through a, like a like the thinking process of what do we do, um, uh, how did how did this typeface come about, and um, the, um, the the first question is where do you tilt? So Zapfino is is slanted forwards. This is coming from the style of writing. It's based on his handwriting. So it's the handwriting of Herman Zaff. And uh, when it comes to the Arabic, obviously Arabic is written from right to left. Latin is written from left to right. So you have this problem. If, if Arabic were to follow the same logic and tilt forward, it will come like this and the Latin will come like this. And then you put them on the same page and they're, you know, they're clashing together. So that doesn't work. But then if you tilt it backwards, then they tilt in the same direction. But then uh, one is forward and one is backwards. So the logic is not exactly the same. Uh, so this was the first struggle, like which way do we go? But at the end of the day, uh, the solution was, OK, it tilts backwards. For one, you avoid the clashes. For two, we do actually have um, references in, in Arabic where you know the, the, the writing is back slanted. Um, it's called the Nastalik style. We'll see a little bit of it later. And, uh, and so there is a historical reference within Arabic calligraphy of lettering or calligraphy that goes backwards. Uh, so that was OK. Uh, but then again, it, it gives a slightly different feel because of the energy. So uh, with this specific project, um, there were many concessions, and we'll go through them. You, it's impossible to take everything one-to-one -one from the Latin into the Arabic. It just doesn't work. And we're not copy-pasting parts. I did try that even, but no. Um, so it's not. Um, it, it is impossible to say, like, OK, this is how it is in Latin. It would be exactly the same in Arabic. We need to imagine as if it was Herman Zapf writing the Arabic. And then, uh, and then maybe it would be like this. In reality, it would be much better than what I came up with. But you know, sort of simulate as if he would write it. So we bring the energy, we bring the movement, we bring the elegance. 
but the shapes themselves we cannot bring over and some of the distinctive shapes unfortunately we could not bring as well and I'll get to that in a little bit. So, uh, so that's the uh, direction. Uh, this is the nastalik calligraphic style, uh, which is slanting backwards as, as um, you know, a little bit more like this. Uh, another calligraphic style that was interesting to look at is the nasr. So the initial idea when I, first, when I went to him that summer was that I would make a hybrid between Nasr and Nastalik. I would mix this style with the one we just saw and sort of find the solution some halfway in the middle. There was not one calligraphic style that would fit Arabic, um, sorry, that would fit with Zapfino, nothing in Arabic that would fit as is with Zapfino. So we needed to make a kind of hybrid. So, and this is where the dilemma was because it wasn't that I was designing a calligraphic looking typeface. I had to invent a calligraphic style and I'm not a calligrapher and my, hand, my handwriting looks really bad, that's why I like to design fonts, so I avoid writing <laughs> and, and it's, it's just uh, I'm, I'm, I don't have the skills for this. So, and, and this, is, this is where the, the, uh, you know, the, the trouble was, uh, trying to find this. And, and the idea was that, okay, we take the back slanting from Nastalik, but we sort of take the stacking structure from, Nas from Nasr because Nastalik jumps, jumps up. And, and the Latin does not, so you don't want to have a Latin like this and then an Arabic that's like this. So, you know, we need to, that's where we need the hybrid. And I tried that and unfortunately it didn't work. Um, so, uh, so, so then again, uh, the first question was the issue of proportions, uh, even before we start to put the letters together. So at first I was looking at Nastalik structures and the kinds of proportions that I would follow would have to be a little bit exaggerated. So uh, you have to have that kind of swash-like effect that Zafino has. Zafino is very much, um, oh, sorry, now I have to stop. <laughs> this is fun, sorry guys. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the fun part of speaking with a cold. Yeah, so this could be edited with a video, please. <laughs> Just all of this. So, um, uh, so Zapfino is characterized by these like, uh, like the, the waves that jump forward, you know, like when you look at the age, or like all of these ascenders, and then you have the F with the descender, like you have the like wave-like structures, a lot of extravagance. We needed to bring that in the Arabic. And the one place where we could add that was at the final forms. So if you look at the character that has the dot in the middle, the thing that looks like a, like a crescent moon, uh, this thing over here, uh, and if you look in the little box, you see how the proportion has been exaggerated. So this is huge, right, compared to what it would normally look like. The one in the box, this is more a Nasr proportion, but still, uh, the Nastalik would not be very far away. Um, so, so you have these extravagant proportions, but the rest is, is normal. Um, in terms of uh, thicks and thins, it had to follow, uh, obviously, Zafino, because Zafino has this uh, very delicate sins, uh, but it couldn't follow 100%. There's a point at which it breaks, and there are things that we can accept in Latin that we cannot accept in Arabic, because the strokes, they, they continue for a very long time. So if you imagine the F in Zafino, it does not have the kind of things that you have in the letter N or E, uh, because it stretches, the stroke stretches for a very long time. And if we were to do that in the Arabic, it would again break. Uh, so in some places we do have some very thin things, but in other places not. And this was one of the dilemmas that I was struggling with. Do I make it exactly the same or not? But even if you look within Zafino, you don't have the same things in every character they change as well, because it tries to bring in this change within the pressure of the nib and uh, the kind of m more handwritten effect. Uh, so it was okay, and at the end, it, it did not stand, that, stand out too much. So uh, the, the, the difficult thing uh, within, uh, within this kind of design is that you're, you're simulating a calligraphic form. But obviously, when you draw them, you draw them each as one separate character. So like what you, is, is this a? Uh, no, okay, so um, yeah, what you see over here, um, this is one character, this is another character, and this is another character. So um, at the end, what you need to do is to be able to draw them all so that they fit together and they look like it was one stroke, but they're actually not one stroke. And, and this was like the, the, the punishment, you know, like the flagellation almost, having to draw curves that fit 
randomly with anything because you know you don't know what comes after or before but then they can look as if it is one stroke and this was the the biggest struggle i think in the whole typeface uh, just to get that connection of course we do have different forms uh, depending on what comes after but there is quite a large number of cases where one character has to fit with maybe um, 20 or 30 different characters that could come after and they just have to work all of them and then again Every character could connect to maybe 30 other characters from before, and they just have to look as if it is just one stroke. And with the age of today, and we like to print things in large sizes, and we like to zoom in. If you don't draw it well, it, it shows. So uh, you know, so that that was one of the most difficult aspects of the uh, of this design. Um, Another, another interesting thing um, is, uh, like I was saying, these extravagant forms. So if you look at, um, hmm. do you notice that there's like these swash movements? You can see them here and then here. Ooh. Okay. And then this one. So um, th these are the extravagant uh, forms that I was referring to. And, uh, and they were necessary to give it a little bit of this Zapfino flair. Uh, it's not exactly a swash. Uh, but they are bigger than you would expect them to. And there again, it was like a, like a game. How big can I make them without them looking comical and still being acceptable? And, and that was, again, a lot of back and forth and trying to find out what is the exact proportion and what is, what is the limit of acceptability? Because at the end of the day, it shouldn't look like a joke. It should just look like someone who's very excited and made something really big because there's a lot of energy in that movement. Um, of course, uh, like I was saying before, there were many different context-sensitive forms. So uh, what, what you would have and what you're seeing at the top line is uh, the letter, so the thing that looks like, a, like this downward shape, this crescent shape, that's the Ra. And we have different versions that come with it. So uh, we have a version which is a little bit sharp, a version which is a little bit like sliding. There's one which I call a slope. So even within the same characters, I had alternates that bring in a little bit of a different flavor to the text. And then based on that, uh, you would have different shapes that connect with them. So you would have different sets. I have one set for the sliding effect, one set for the slopey effect. And, uh, and then you would say, OK, before the Ra, I need always this Every character will have its own version with the Ra. And then if I have the He, which is the middle, the one where it falls down, I have every connecting character that connects to what is after has a special version that comes before this character. So you have almost like, it's almost like you're designing the Latin typeface. Uh, everything is normal, but then before the T, before the H, before the I, and before the O, everything needs to have a special version for connecting with these characters. So it makes the work a little bit difficult, but then it gives this handwritten feel and it gives this kind of calligraphic influence. <clears throat> same thing over here, the same character, the vertical one, it's the same character, but it has different shapes because there's a different connecting logic to what comes after. Um, and then again, over here, um, it's, uh, so the thing that has teeth, this is the seam, and then the little blob is a meme, and then that one we've seen before, that's the Ra. And the stacking, it's not like characters sit side by side, but rather they go diagonally, and that's the logic of the typeface. Uh, by this instant, by the way, I had completely given up on the Nastalik approach. It, was, it just didn't work, so I had to switch back to Nasch and then have it slanted backwards. So that was almost the final result in terms of what I could do. You cannot take the shapes of one calligraphic style with a stacking logic of another and expect them to work. The, the shapes and how they connect, they're very much related to each other, so they, they, you need it to stay within one logic. Uh, another interesting thing with the design, and here you can see, so this is what a word would look like, but if we were to split it apart into its isolated forms, this is the shapes. So you have the first one is the T. This is a special shape that comes before the He, which is the one in the middle, and that He is a special form that comes before the meme, because the meme always needs a special form before. So it's, it's just fun, and, and they're all like special and they love each other. So, <laughs> uh, but you know, once you figure out the logic, then it's easy, uh, because like, okay, I need a hey with everything and then I need a meme with everything uh, and then you just do a bit of open type features and then it, it, it works. Um, another interesting thing is the fact that there was this slight slant to the typeface. So there is a small movement that it, it falls downwards. This makes the typeface less stiff and uh, was a good idea to bring also this non-rigidity to the typeface. 
Um, another one is the teeth. So in Arabic, we have teeth that, you know, repeat one after the other. Um, in calligraphic styles, we distinguish so that they don't all look the same. Uh, in non-calligraphic styles, we leave them the same. And in this one, you can see it changes. So the, the first wave and the second wave, uh, this is the same kind of design, but when they repeat, they change. So this is how it, this is how the logic. So the B, this is all the same character in its initial, middle, and then middle, middle, and then final. And then you can see that the repetition, when you have the middle, they start to stack. So it's not the same wave because then it looks just too mechanical if it's the same shape, but rather there's a little bit of a differentiation between them. Another interesting thing that we had to keep in mind where the dots are. In Arabic, we have a lot of characters that have dots above or below and that have the same basic shape as another one. And in this case, uh, if we look over uh, here, so the dot is for the second character, but it's very possible to have the dot, if we move it just like a couple of centimeters in this direction, it actually then belongs to the first character. So it's very important that we place the dots in exactly the right position. And again, this was a ton of work. So like all of it, this is all suffering. It, it, it looks easy now, but it was like a lot of suffering in the middle. Um, and then this is what they look like uh, when you see them together. And, and the concessions I talked about, you can immediately spot. I don't have this like waves that go above and below. It's just there's no place for them in Arabic. There is no stroke in Arabic that can go in a wave like this. And again, the Latin is very repetitive in this direction. The Arabic is going in every direction. It's almost like um, the Latin, even in a script version, is like the... Uh, 26 soldiers of lead, even when they tilt forwards, there's a very repetitive rhythm. The Arabic is like noodles, you know, so it's just like it's pasta. So it's like spaghetti, it's, it's everywhere. So it looks nice, it tastes nice, but it's just, it's, it's everywhere. So, uh, so it's very hard to get that repetitive thing when you go into the organic styles like that. And uh, this is them again together and, and again. Uh, this is now with Zafino Extra, and a hint, if anybody ever actually wants to use Zafino Arabic, it looks better with Zafino Extra, but for technical reasons, we couldn't put them together, not at this point at least. It, it was enough of a struggle, I didn't need more, but um, it actually works better with Zafino Extra because Zafino Extra has more alternates than what people have gotten used to, and the normal version of Zafino that comes with, you know, with, with Mac, it, it's been so overused that people don't appreciate it anymore. If you go to the Extra, you get nicer things, and, and then you get to play some more. Um, uh, this is a snapshot from glyphs. Um, I, so I did all the work in glyphs. It was the only way I could actually manage to get this typeface without glyphs. I would not have been able to do it. And the most important part is that you had this uh, ability to design in a string. So I was actually designing words, not just individual letters. And you can see how they all connect together, the cursive attachment, getting this uh, special versions working together. This was, this was the main reason why I switched to glyphs, and I'm very happy with it. Yesterday, the new version came out. I'm also switching to that. So um, it's, it's a really powerful tool. Open type features are very easy to draw in glyphs, at, well, not to draw, to, to, uh, to, to write. And um, it, it would not have been possible to do this kind of complexity in design without being able to have that view. And it was really nice to be able to, um, uh, to see the, um, both the, uh, uh, become a designer and an engineer at the same time. The open type features are very complex in this typeface. The kerning is, 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 is a nightmare, but uh, to be able to, 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 see, to see it and then to say, okay, I need new alternates, and then to just go write a few lines and you're done, uh, that kind of freedom is, is, is precious and, and we did not have before, uh, especially when it comes to Arabic. So this is really cool. Um, uh, and again, the, the whole point is that we're designing words and not letters because things need to combine together. And for a very long time, there was like one year in the middle of the two years where I could not output a paragraph and show it to people because it looked very ugly. And so I would show individual letters and people were like, ah, nice. And I'm like, yeah. So yeah, the individual, you should see when they combine. And, and so, yeah, so it's just uh, because the logic doesn't work together and then they, they look too stiff and things are not working. So it's always very important that when we judge characters, we judge them in the context of words and not in the context of individual forms and this holds true for Latin as well and lastly this is an animation that I did which needs to start somehow uh, I wanted to show how the movement yeah no uh, yes ah yes ah,
Thank you.